Okay. Aloha. Welcome to lecture three of human embryology. Uh, this lecture, we're going to be discussing the first week of development, which is fertilization, cleavage, blastocyst formation, and attachment. So most of you have seen this slide before. In fact, all of you should have seen this slide before uh, when we talked about meiosis versus mitosis. Okay, so just as a brief reminder, we go through this first meiotic division and right about here, uh, everything stalls until ovulation occurs. Then once ovulation occurs, we go ahead and keep progressing through the process until here, right? By this point, so one of these would have been a polar body, right? Uh, but anyway, we get to here and we pause and we stop and everything's poised and ready for that last division to form that uh, second polar body. Uh, but nothing happens yet until when? Fertilization, right. So if fertilization doesn't occur, this division never happens. But assuming that fertilization occurs, then bam, this thing hurries up and splits. <clears throat> the second polar body is formed and then we're, you know, we're ready to rock and roll. So um, fertilization usually happens here, right where this arrow is pointing in the ampulla of the fallopian tube, right? The follicle ruptures, the egg is sucked in through the infundibulum and peristalsis moves it up here. And about that time, the uh, sperm are finished with their great surfing adventure and they meet the egg right about here. Um, at which point, hopefully fertilization happens. Right, so um, <clears throat> first things first, let's go over the different parts of the egg. Um, once, you know, so this is the uh, corona radiata, okay? The corona radiata is basically follicle cells. These are mom cells that uh, came out with the egg. They form a shell around the egg and there's various reasons for that. One is to, you know, create an extra barrier for the sperm to get through, but then also it creates a barrier between the egg and mom's immune system and other bad stuff that they might find in the, um, in the uterine cavity or before that, right? Um, it's a protective layer. So mom's, um, well, I guess mom's immune system doesn't really, anyway, moving on. So uh, the next one is zona pellucida, okay? This zona pellucida uh, serves a, oops, sorry about that. Zona pellucida, um, He's going to come into play a little bit later on, okay? Uh, and then we have the plasma membrane of the oocyte, okay? So what's going to happen? These sperm cells, they come in and they have this acrosome cap that contains proteolytic enzymes. This guy bumps into here and they release those enzymes and it punches a nice neat little hole. And the first one doesn't get through, okay? It's not the, it's not the first sperm to the egg that wins the race. It's the guy that happens to hit the right spot at the right time. So, you know, once the sperm reach the egg, there's generally around 300 sperm that make it there. And out of those 300 sperm, you know, they basically bombard this thing with this proteolytic enzymes until one of them finally gets deep enough to touch the cell membrane. Once the cell membrane of the sperm and the cell membrane of the egg come in contact, they merge. And once those cell membranes merge, there's a couple of things that happen. Okay, the first thing is that the zona pellucida thickens. This green guy right here, he thickens and gets harder and that prevents any other sperm from punching through because you don't want more than one sperm worth of DNA in there, okay? So this guy gets hard as a rock and much thicker, probably not hard as a rock, but he gets much harder and much thicker so that no other sperm can penetrate, okay? The next thing that happens is that second meiotic division happens. Remember, it's been waiting here in metaphase, right? And as soon as those membranes contact each other, blip, that second uh, meiotic division happens, the second polar body is formed, and now you're left with a female pronuclei floating around in the cytoplasm, okay? 
Um, now the, um, the, the sperm, the nucleus of the sperm and the tail exit the uh, cell membrane of the sperm and they are, are gonna be floating around in here, okay? So once the sperm enters the egg, once the sperm nucleus enters the egg, now you've got a zygote. And this zygote has 46 chromosomes, right? Between the female pronucleus and the male pronucleus. So by the way, these are called pronuclei, okay? The reason they call them pronuclei is because uh, they're not quite a nucleus. This one has half the DNA and this one has half the DNA, oops. And so uh, they're not quite nuclei, they're pronuclei, right? So what happens after the genetic material and the tail enter the egg is the tail starts to degenerate. Bye-bye tail, okay? Once, as the tail degenerates, a cell membrane or a, a nuclear membrane forms around the male DNA and everything starts to unwind, right? Once the pronuclear, uh, once the pronuclei are formed, the DNA begins to replicate in both pronuclei, right? This one starts to replicate, and this one starts to replicate. Only after the replication of the DNA is completed, then these two pronuclei, um, they don't really merge so much as their cell membranes just break down, or the, the sorry, not the cell membrane, but the nuclear membrane uh, just kind of breaks down, and now they're all floating around in the cytoplasm together, right? Uh, prophase completes, um, and, and the first mitotic division happens. So once this first mitotic division happens, they call this cleavage, right? One cell becomes two and that's called cleavage. So up until that point, once that sperm enters, now this is called a zygote. It doesn't stay a zygote very long, okay? Once that first cell division happens, which is pretty darn quick after it's fertilized, now we have cleavage. We no longer have a zygote, we have a conceptus, okay? So that word bears uh, a definition, okay? A conceptus is the entire product of conception, including the embryo, membranes, placenta, and everything else. So the conceptus is the entire product of conception, right? So uh, cleavage occurs, okay? Um, two cells, one cell becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, these first eight or less cell, excuse me, eight or less cells are called blastomeres, okay? The cool thing about blastomeres is blastomeres can become anything, okay? That might be something worth remembering on a quiz sometime in the future. A blastomere can differentiate into any type of human cell, okay? So, as soon as we reach eight, uh, then those cells begin to change shape. They're no longer round, they start to become compact. Okay, and part of the reason for that is because they're running out of space, right? So they change shape from round to compacted. And once we get to, uh, you know, between 12 and 32 cells, okay, 12 and 32 cells is now called a morula. Okay, and um, at this stage, once we get to the morula stage, the cells begin to segregate themselves, okay? They start to differentiate for the first time. And now we differentiate into embryoblasts and trophoblasts, right? Now, so far as the cells divide, they're just becoming smaller and smaller and smaller with each division. And a lot of that is because of the, you know, the confines of the zona pellucida. There's just nowhere for them to go. So they just get smaller and smaller and smaller every time they divide. Right. At any rate, uh, at any rate, after about four days following fertilization, the morula finally enters the uterus. Once the morula enters the uterus, it starts to take in uterine fluid, right? Fluid from the uterus, and it forms this fluid-filled cavity called the blastocystic cavity. This process is called blastogenesis. Blastogenesis converts the morula into a blastocyst, okay? Now, what we have is we have this outer layer of cells and this outer layer of cells that forms a ring around the outside, those are the trophoblasts. And then these inner layer of cells, this inner uh, bunch of cells is called the embryoblasts. So we have 
the trophoblasts and the embryoblasts all forming the uh, blastocyst, okay? With the blastocystic cavity now taking up space in the middle. And as this thing starts to take on fluid, it starts to get bigger. And what's gonna happen when you've got stuff that's getting bigger inside of a shell that's too small? Well, the shell is gonna break. So this zona pellucida eventually just breaks apart and falls apart. And once that happens, the uh, blastocyst begins to get bigger and it begins to get a lot bigger really fast. Um, now, after about six days, uh, this thing's finally gonna bump into the wall of the uterus, bump, and then it sticks, right? As it sticks, this portion of the trophoblast cells, right? The trophoblasts are the ones around the edge, the embryoblasts are on the inside. So the part of the trophoblasts that bump into the uterine wall, they divide and they form a second layer of cells. That's down here. The second layer of cells is called the syncytiotrophoblast. The reason they call them that is because all of those cells merge together their cell membranes and they become this big multinucleated syncytium, right? It's basically an invasive blob that destroys everything in its path because these syncytiotrophoblast cells um, produce proteolytic enzymes. And as they invade the uterine tissue, they dissolve everything in their path and all these um, endometrial cells that it's dissolving um, become what provides nutrition for the embryoblast at this stage of the game because it needs food too, right? This is a baby, it needs to eat, okay? Um, and that is as far as we're gonna go at this point. Oh, so this other layer of cells, right? The original layer of cells, these become the cytotrophoblasts, right? The cytotrophoblasts surround the embryoblast and the syncytiotrophoblasts become, or, and yeah, the other syncytiotrophoblasts are the ones that burrow into the, the uterine wall. Now, this other layer of cells down here, these are called the hypoblasts. We're gonna get to that in the next lecture, okay? Um, but I'm sure some of you are wondering, so there's a little sneak peek, okay? Uh, that'll be all for lecture three. Uh, this one was a little bit longer than the next one, but lecture four is going to really get meaty. So um, that's it for the first week of development. We'll see you guys at the next lecture. Aloha.